We have uh, one of our friends who used to work with us here at uh, WROK. He's the head basketball coach at Boylan High School, and he's busy right now this time of year. Here's Coach Mike Winters. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Morning, Dave. Matt, how you guys doing? Hey, you're winding down your summer uh, tournament stuff. Tell us how things are going for the Titans this year. Yeah, already. It's like we just started three <laughs> weeks ago, and, and it just goes just unbelievably fast here with camps in between and everything. But uh, we're having a good summer. We're we're uh, sixteen and two right now. Uh, dropped a one point game in which we just couldn't make a shot, and, and lost to a good Rock Island team with a couple guys sitting out with some just some minor injuries, just banged up a little bit. And sometimes you get to those tournaments and you've played five, six games in a short time, and, and guys are banged up. So you just you know, everybody kind of has to go through that stuff. But uh, it's been encouraging. It's been it's been good so far. You know, I know the games are, uh, you know, different in the summer than they are during the season, but it always amazes me how many games, you know, you probably end up playing as as much, if not maybe more, than you do in the high school season in probably, what, like a five, six-week time frame? Not yet, probably even less than that. I think we played our first games on uh, June 9th, mm-hmm. and uh, we're at 18 games with probably three more coming today, and uh, only, I think our last games are on, on July 9th, so in, within a month, we're going to play close to 30 games. Yeah, where are you at today, Mike? Where you? What, what are you playing at? Uh, we are at Crystal Lake South today. Hey, you know, I, I've uh, you know, I think I've heard some quiet, uh, you, you know, in, impressiveness. I guess you could say, you know, over what some of the things you guys are doing, what you guys got coming up this year. You know, who are some of the players that are that are kind of stepping up for you? Well, Zach Cooper looks outstanding right mm-hmm. now. I mean, he continues to grow. He's he's a, he's a legit about six four, six four and a half. Wow. Um, you know, he, he had a great sophomore year. He's got yeah. point. Mm-hmm. He was a sophomore. And, uh, you know, it's easy to compare Zach to Brock Stoll, I think, just because of the size and, and the way they play the game. And, uh, you know, Zach's already a little taller, and, and I think Brock only averaged about seven points a game his sophomore year. So if you're doing a comparison thing, I mean, people kind of get into that. Uh, Zach is having a great spring, or had a great spring, with Gateway AAU program out of uh, St. Louis. And, uh, you know, that 16U team he's on now finished the year last year uh, as 15 U's ranked number one in the country. So just to make that team. Mm-hmm. was really impressive for Zach. And, and then the rest of our guys coming back, Luke McDermott has been outstanding at the point guard spot. You know, he's been up for, with us for two years. And uh, Sam Fairley inside, he has another kid that's been up with us for two years, and, and that's really paying off. He's, he's playing really well inside and uh, just gotten bigger and stronger. And, and uh, Angel Seminary, another guy that's back for us from last year, uh, is looking really, really good for us. Well, you know, you look at uh, the summer basketball. What are you trying to do as a coach when, you know, you've lost that senior bunch? You had some good senior leadership there. Those guys are gone. What are you trying to do during the summer to get ready for the high school season? Well, you know, it goes by so fast. I think the biggest thing you're trying to do early on is, is make the, the kids realize it's their team now. Mm-hmm. You know, it seems like every year they're looking for that leading scorer from the past year to show up and, and lead them, and, and they're not coming back. So you know, you'll certainly try to get that. Uh, established really early that hey it's your team now you know guys roles are going to change guys got to step up I think you're trying to establish roles um, at, but at the same time encourage guys to, to work on their weaknesses and uh, you know we talked like Sam Fairley at six seven is is uh, is a guy who is uh, you know he's trying to do it do more off the dribble and attack and we've talked to him about you know in those those twenty point games that's a great time to do that those two point games let's maybe uh, you know, put that in our back pocket and, until we get an opportunity to, to be up or down big and, and go at it again. So you, you're trying to give them that, that room for growth and, uh, you know, establish roles and, and build confidence all at the same time. You know, you play so many games in, in such a short time frame, so there's going to be times where maybe kids play play more than they're used to or maybe have to play in a spot that, that they don't normally play in. Has, has anybody kind of shown up and maybe shown you some things that maybe you didn't know they could do or didn't think they could do as well as they've done? Well, I think one thing, you know, one kid I, and a senior I forgot to mention, Hunter Deckman has, has been really, really good for us this summer as well. And, uh, you know, Hunter's a kid that last year we, we tried to play him inside and outside to get him more playing time. And uh, I think maybe we did him a disservice with that last year. And, and this year we've really focused with him on the perimeter, and, and he can just flat-out shoot it. And mm. he's really thriving in that role. So he's been really good. Um, you know, we've got some, some upcoming juniors. Anthony Foreman uh, is a kid that uh, he's just a leader. And, and this, this junior class coming up for us has so many leaders in it. Um, it just makes makes my job a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable. But uh, Anthony Foreman's been really good. Kevin Deemer, uh, Max Farson, Reed Rolette. I think you're going to see a – we're subbing five at a time now every four minutes just because we're so deep and – yeah, I don't think that's something you probably can do in the regular season, but uh, in, in the summertime it's fun because we have so many different guys leading us and having success from game to game. 
you know, something we were talking about before you came on was some changes in Wisconsin, and they're changing from quarters to, to right. halves. You know, what's your take on something like that? What, what would you prefer, I guess, in a perfect world for you? I think it's just kind of what the kids know now. You mm-hmm. know with the, the AAU uh, summer travel ball, that stuff, it's just kind of what they do anyway. So I don't think it has a huge impact. It, it, I'll be honest, it'd be kind of nice to have the choice halfway through. Mm-hmm. You know, if your team's rolling, All right. force the other team to call that timeout versus mm-hmm. having it you know, pre-established with the end of a quarter. Mm-hmm. You know, you're on a 10-0 run. You don't want the quarter to end. So um, from that standpoint, I think it's nice. I don't think it's going to have a huge impact. Um, you know, I heard you guys talking about the shot clock too, and you know, logistically, you guys nailed that. It's it's just it's the operator. It's mm-hmm. it's an added nightmare for the the referees, which <laughs> you know, have, have enough difficult things to do as it is. So, I think that'll take some more time. I wouldn't be surprised if Illinois was in was going to halves within a couple of years. You know, uh, Wisconsin's going to do it on a one year trial. That would be a good way of figuring out if it's going to work, don't you think, Mike? Yeah, I think that makes sense to, to just, you know, I, I think people are going to resist change anyways, and maybe that makes them a little less resistant to it when they know it can be reviewed after a year, and, you know, we're going to do what makes sense after a year. I think that's a good way to go. You know, something else that changes, obviously, some of the uh, playoff stuff. You know, number one, you guys drop down a class, but then also the way they're doing some of the seedings and whatnot. What do, what do you look at, you know, you know, kind of looking into the future at the playoffs and how some of that will kind of shake out? Well, I think the subsectionals is, is good for us. I, I still think it's, you know, I, I still don't know why it's different um, <laughs> than the rest of the state, but, it, I mean, it's a step in the right direction. Right. Definitely. Um, kind of wish it had been there the last couple of years. You right. Know, for, for us in Auburn and Hunting, all three of us, and, and I'm sure Lutheran and Belvedere are sitting there saying the same thing as well. Mm-hmm. You know, we're moving forward. That's, that's, that's good. That means they're listening to coaches and principals finally. I uh, say finally. They say <laughs> they always are. We always feel like they're not, but you know how that goes. Mm-hmm. But, um yeah, I think that part of it will be good. Um, uh, as far as the move to 3A, it's funny. I've, I've, you know, social media, you guys talking social media today, people just, uh, you know, people are accusing us of, of not wanting <laughs> to play in 4A, and they don't understand that it's, there is no process anymore for a waiver. It's just automatic. Right. And, uh, you know, this is what people have been asking for for a long time to, to put this success factor in. I think it makes sense. You know, I think sometimes schools get punished that are, are doing everything the right way and, and honestly haven't had much success at all. And, uh, you know, I just think it makes sense to, uh, to put in a policy that kind of, you know, pertains to each individual school versus a blanketed policy. I, I, do, I do disagree completely with the fact that Lutheran's got to play in 4A. I don't think that's right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and you're, you're, you're punishing them twice, which I don't think is fair. Um, normally kids have worked hard to get to where they're at. And, and number two, you're punishing kids who didn't have anything to do with the past success as well. So. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't don't really agree with the the uh, moving up two classes. Um, I think that should be more of a football thing, probably. Right. Um, two classes in football is the same as moving one class in basketball. So right. They need, maybe need to look at that again. But uh, yeah, a lot of change coming up for sure. Well, you know, and we've kind of joked about you know you know poor Belvedere. They they finally get rid of Lutheran, but their reward is you guys coming down. But you know, it's not exactly easy for you guys either. I mean, yes, you get away from that Harlem or the you know Auburn and Hananiga and all that group, but, you know, Belvedere's really turned into a great program, too, and you guys have had some tough games with them. Yeah, and Aaron does a great job. You know, his kids, you know his kids are going to show them play hard. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, you don't always know that against some teams. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's, there's no gimmies, and, you know, we've been out. Uh, it's funny how we're, we're picking out the 3A teams now and how good we think they are this summer as we see them. Um, mm-hmm. You know, saw Woodstock Marion yesterday. Could play them today, possibly. And they look really good. You know, just an up-and-coming program. They've been really young for a couple of years, and I and, uh, was really impressed with them. And, you know, yesterday they've got pretty much a little bit of everything. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of other good teams around here. It, it, it's Richmond Burden. We played them yesterday. They've got a, a 6'10 Division One recruit. They've got another kid that's about 6'5 that's really athletic. And You said recruit. Did, did you mean that, or 6'5 kid, or...? Uh, 6'10. Richmond Burden's got a 6'10, 270-pound kid. That's, he's good. Wow. 